But there's only there's only one in. Um, okay. Um, so if you're tuning in right now, uh, we're at the we're at Columbia University at the second occupation uh, encampment. If you've been following this, you know that uh, this morning the. The NYPD entered the Columbia University campus and they arrested the Palestine Solidarity encampment here at Columbia. And that that encampment was uh, right over there on that lawn. And immediately at, when when the NYPD entered the school campus, uh, a bunch of people basically surrounded the encampment. Uh, students surrounded the encampment and were, began chanting. Uh, let them go and, you know, uh, free free Palestine. And immediately after that, the students actually hopped the fence here, hopped this fence, I'm gonna zoom in. They hopped that fence and now they are here and, and they formed a second encampment. Uh, and right now there are police outside. Um, they haven't entered the campus yet. They haven't made an attempt to stop this encampment yet. There are also solidarity protests on the outside. Um, but we're going to be here, we're going to be live streaming, and uh, we're going to talk to some people who have been at the encampment now. Um, so yeah, stick with us, we're going to be here for uh, Naim said that time. he will give this back to Pratik, so can you please yeah. give this to Naim? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Can you give your one minute? I got here maybe 20 minutes later. Oh, okay. What time are you? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. 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 Uh, coming back. Shai, close, shai. Yeah, yeah. So, um, can you tell me why you're out here today? Yeah, I think the Columbia students are doing an amazing job. Um, I think students are a very longitudinal force of like organizing, and um, divestment needs to happen now. And I think college campuses are very important. Academia is very important to confront, especially around their silence. Yeah, and when were you out here earlier today? Were you part of the first encampment? And what brought you out, if not um, to the second encampment? I was not part of the first encampment. I was trying to support from outside and help supplies get in, but then um, I also know that it's important to be here and support what's going on inside because of the mass surveillance and police presence that was taking this, this, uh, this encampment. Yeah, so speaking of that, I mean, today we saw um, over 100 students get arrested and suspended as well. Um, I believe cops haven't been on campus since 1968. And within 24 hours, the president of the university um, called the cops in to have these students arrested. Um, can you tell me what your thoughts are about that? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, the students are standing on the side of justice. The other thing is that this feeds into repression that ha is happening across the entire country in multiple spaces on Palestine activism, and that's unacceptable. Um, we have many historical lessons of why what's happening now in Palestine, the genocide, um, has happened in other places through the history of colonialism. Um, and so we're only walking in the footsteps of people who've done the work similar to before us. And so it's unfortunate that now people are still using the same tactics of repression, of police brutality, of arrests to silence what we should know by now is actually the right, the right thing to do. And speaking of that repression, you know, um, what will it take to, to make you leave here? Um, what would it take me to leave here until Columbia commits to a meaningful divestment? Until the demands of the main organizers are met. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So, for those just tuning in right now, um, we are on campus at Columbia University, uh, the site of the historic encampment for Palestine. And the students here have been facing like a lot of repression for the last six months. Uh, 
you've been following what's been happening on the campus, the Columbia Students for Justice in Palestine and the Columbia like, Jewish Voice for Peace were both banned many months ago. Um, okay. We're, okay, we're hearing that the audio is too low. We're gonna uh, just try to troubleshoot that on, yeah, on the DJI. Just get really close and you'll be good. What's that? You can just get really close and keep narrating if you yeah. want. But, uh, so, the, yeah, so there's been a lot of repression. Um, Columbia banned SJP and JVP. Basically, what they said was that they held a demonstration without a permit. Um, but they also created this new rule where they have to uh, apply for a permit like six weeks in advance, basically banning protests. And then, you know, of course, no student group could really follow that, so they just went ahead with the demonstration. They banned SJP and JVP. And after that, Columbia students formed their own, uh, they formed a new organization it's called Columbia, Uni Columbia University of Puerto Rico, uh, co op. And uh, they've continued their divestment fight. And this has all sort of culminated in this, in this encampment, which you're seeing in front of us. Basically, the students felt, you know, there's not enough being done. And the university administration, uh, you know, isn't doing anything about it, so that they needed to take more drastic measures. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Also, if you're wondering why we're stagnant, we're trying to get some audio issues fixed. I, I hear it's in the uh, audio. Uh, uh, stick with us. Because this is, this is an incredibly historic battle. And I think it's a awesome video. I think Yale University is also following suit. And uh, this might spread to many campuses. Hack. Many campuses around the country. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be going around tonight, just talking to people. But uh, yeah, please, please stick with us. Right now, there doesn't seem to be anything happening. Um, you need to just go ahead and it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so we're gonna skip all of this. Switching with a shotgun. <laughs> Wait, now you're putting the DJI wasn't it wasn't on. It was using the DJI. Oh, okay, so now we're on now the, we're DJ. the DJ. Okay. Uh can we can people in the comments just tell us if the audio is alright? And where is Emily? Hey, what's up? How's it going? Um John, where's it? Okay. All right, uh, Emily, can you can you just uh, I'm asking the 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 stream if the audio is okay. Can you just check the comments? Sure, I should be back. Okay, so uh, the programming is about to start soon, so we'll be streaming all that. It's good. Now. Um, it's good? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna head over to the front now. Um. Now to my left. Uh, there's a giant building here, but you can hear some, uh, there's a protest happening on the outside. There have been people who have been showing up in solidarity with the encampment, um, coming from the outside. Oh, okay. And I think that, yeah, I think the prayer is happening right now. Adon. All right, so uh, there's a prayer happening right now. And I think after this, uh, the programming will start again. Brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll start the jama'ah in a few minutes. If we could please straighten the rows out before we do that. So, if you're joining us just now, um, 
we're at the Columbia University encampment. Um, there's a prayer happening right now, so we're just going to wait for that to finish, and then um, I think there's going to be some programming, there's going to be some speeches, but this is, um, this is an encampment that followed the first encampment, which you may have seen on social media. Um, those students who were, who were uh, doing the encampment on the other lawn, there are two lawns here at Columbia University, the students who were doing the encampment on the other lawn were arrested this morning by the NYPD, which is uh, unprecedented because the NYPD has not been allowed on this campus since 1968. And was that? Okay, cool, cool. Um, so, yeah, the NYPD has been banned from the campus since 1968 uh, when there were massive protests for um, against the Vietnam War. And... Um, since then, people have have been sort of uh, the 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 school has has resisted allowing NYPD on campus. But this morning, in order to clear the encampment, Manu Shafiq, who is the Columbia University president, who was just facing, uh, who was just in Congress, being grilled essentially uh, by these Zionist congressmen and women to to do more to crush pro-Palestinian voices. They were pressuring her and they were, you know, telling her she's not doing enough. And then shortly after, she sent an email saying that um, saying that she was going to basically arrest her own students. But anyway, I think we're going to turn to an interview now uh, with a student here. Um, yeah, so can you tell me uh, why you're out here to, tonight? Yeah, so I'm out here with um, PYM and... I just think that Colombia cannot be complicit in genocide, and we need to show support to students here. Um, repeatedly, Palestinian and Arab students have said that they don't feel safe on campus, and the administration has done nothing to support them, and instead they're repressing them. They're bringing NYPD on campus to brutally arrest students. Um, and <laughs> I'm just here to ensure that we show support. Yeah, yeah. So were you involved in the, the first encampment today? Um, and if not, I mean, what brought you out here? I mean, you kind of already got to that. But um, yeah, so were you involved with the first encampment? Um, I wasn't on campus yesterday. However, I was with um, the contingent that came from Union Square, and we were outside showing our support from outside of the campus. Um, and we had a great rally, and we made sure that the students knew that we were here. Yeah, so, so you spoke to the police repression already, but um, so we saw today over 100 students get arrested, right, um, within 24 hours of the action. Um, cops have not been allowed on campus since 1968, but within 24 hours, right, we saw the president of the college um, call the cops on these students and have them arrested and suspended. So could you kind of give me your thoughts on that level of repression targeting these students for uh, a peaceful protest? Yeah, definitely. I think it's very intentional. We've seen across the board in New York City how the National Guard is being deployed, police presence is heightened, and they're definitely trying to shut down the movement because they're afraid. They're seeing how the movement is growing, and they're afraid of change. And that's why we need to come together and just be stronger and just show them that we're not going anywhere until Colombia divests and until the United States as a whole is not complicit in genocide and is not backing this genocide that's been ongoing for over like six months now. Thank you so much. So uh, just turning back to the crowd here, um, let us know in the comments if uh, there are any audio or visual problems. But um, so students have been gathered here since about uh, 4 p.m. And, uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, they basically, when the students were getting arrested on the first encampment, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take you guys over there to the first lawn and we can, we can just walk through the timeline of events. Um, right now there's a prayer happening, but, uh, there'll be a, a program shortly after. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to, I'm going to walk, walk you guys through the timeline Sorry, there's like a lot of people here. Sorry. 
<clears throat> this is this is way bigger than the first encampment, um, and you can see the way the repression has just has increased the support for Palestine. Um, so this is the second lawn. This was not where the first. Uh, this was not where the first encampment was. Where's Emily? She was talking. Oh, she's talking to someone. Okay. Okay, okay. We'll go back to her. Um, but basically, this is where the first encampment was across the way here. I'm going to zoom in. Um, so see, see that over there? That's where the first encampment was. They had set up tents. They had, had like a ton of food. We were embedded uh, in the encampment. I actually slept there last night. But, uh, yeah, they, they were pledging to basically occupy it until the school either divested or until they were arrested. And uh, they were arrested today at around 3 p.m. I don't know what those white things are, but that's where the tents were. And when the NYPD entered campus, which they hadn't done since 1968... They came through that gate, arrested everyone, and this whole area was full of students. Um, I talked to one student, he was like, I had never seen anything like this before. I mean, this whole area was full. There were people hanging off those walls over there by the library, and they were chanting, let them go, free Palestine. And... Uh, when they got arrested, people were so angry, they actually hopped this fence here. And they formed a second encampment. And that's what you're seeing right now. We don't really know how this is going to develop. But we're going to be following it. Um, right now, there are there were many, many NYPD arrest vans outside. And several Palestinian groups are on campus right now demonstrating. Um, so I think, let's go back. We'll, we'll head back to, to Emily right now. But... Um, we basically, um, this is kind of uncharted territory for the student movement. And I, I, I saw a video, and I don't know if people can, um, if people want to share in the comments if there are any other schools that they're seeing, you know, solidarity from or seeing encampments at. I saw Yale University, I think, is, is attempting something similar now. But... Uh, it really feels like the student movement, that Columbia right now is the heart of the student movement, and this could very well lead to, who knows? Who knows what it could lead to? Um, so, I think the prayer is almost finished. Where's Emily? Oh. They're just basically, they're basically like holding on. So we've got another student here. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Um, can you tell me why you're out here tonight? Yeah, I'm out here to support uh, the people of Gaza and Palestine in general and uh, to show solidarity with them and to speak out against Colombia's discrimination against uh, uh, pro Palestinian supporters and Palestinian students and anti genocide mm -hmm. students in general. Yeah, and were you involved with the first encampment earlier today? Um, what brought you out? Uh, and, yeah. I was not involved in the first encampment. Uh, what brought me out was I saw clips, footage online of NYPD harassment and bullying as usual. And uh, the president, Manu Shafiq's email that authorized them to enter. Even though they have not assaulted anyone, they have not spewed any hatred uh, against any religion or culture or people in general. So it was unjustified. Uh, so that kind of what brought me out when I saw the footage of all the stuff going on. Yeah, and um, speaking of that, so we saw a lot of repression today on students. Students, over 100 students were arrested. Um, students were suspended for something that I believe would normally be for, um, would be like a verbal uh, consequence. Instead, were arrested and cops were sent on campus. So what, is your, what are your thoughts on that? So it, it speaks to Colombia's, uh, since October 7th, Colombia's uh, history or, yeah, Colombia's history of punishing 
peaceful protesters. And it goes to show that even like when a couple of weeks ago when they suspended five students, uh, middle of the night, the, uh, Columbia hired ex-cops to try to break into the homes without a lawyer present to speak about their private text messages. Uh, it kind of like, you know, it's just, it shows uh, the Pre- Minou Shafiq's complicity in uh, supporting the genocide, her and her administration. And furthermore, Columbia's inaction against the students, that the former IDF uh, students on campus a few months ago when they, sp- when they sprayed uh, skunk gas, I believe, on, uh, on uh, uh, protesters. Yeah, and so despite this, can you kind of explain uh, the mood tonight and how people are feeling out here? So, I mean, people are, they're not tired, you know. I mean, people are obviously angry about what's going on. People are rightfully so. Uh, but And I know it's cold and people have, you know, their own responsibilities, but they're not tired at all. And it goes to show, like, if you see the footage uh, of people around the, camp, around the campus, um, they'll keep this up. Uh, you know, we were not tired October 7, October 8, and we won't be tired for as long as it takes until to get a ceasefire and until Palestine is liberated. Thank you so much. No I'm just going to clip this on me. Um, so we're here. We're here at Columbia University. This big building in the back is the library. Um, and every every building, every entrance right now is basically uh, blocked by security. Um, and there, it's, it's, it's like a, it's a total... It's a total lockdown on campus here. Um, one thing that we can show you is uh, one thing that we can show you is that graduation is coming up. And oh, I'm, okay. I don't want to go over here. The prayer is happening. Um, there are flags taped to the ground here as well. Um, it's not a great view, but here, I'm going to zoom in right now. See this? See those bleachers back there? Let me change the focus. So, Columbia, Columbia's graduation, I, I can't really get, oh, can't really get a good angle, but Columbia's graduation is happening next week, or two weeks from now, and they they said, you know, they used graduation basically as a pretext to clear out the first encampment. They said that um, they need to set up, they need to set up uh, for graduation. Now, the protesters that we talked to said they, they weren't doing this. this. They were saying this has actually been in planning for months. Um, they weren't doing it to disrupt graduation or anything like that, but um, they told us that as soon as the encampment started, they started bringing in trucks and setting up uh, their their uh, graduation stands. And um, they think the protesters that were arrested think that was being used as a pretext to. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Whenever. Oh, I think we have another interview. Okay, could you tell me um, what brought you out here tonight? Were you, uh, were you involved in the first encampment? And um, yeah, what brought you out here? Uh, yeah, so a lot of us have been out here since early, early Wednesday morning. Um, and yeah, I originally came out in support of the original camp- encampment. Um, but yeah, we, we remain out here um, until the police get all of us out. But as you can see, a lot more people have come out since um, in response to the, the initial sweep of the encampment. Yeah, yeah. So we saw a lot of repression today. We saw over 100 students arrested um, after the president allowed the cops to come on campus and arrest students within 24 hours of the action. Um, yeah, could you kind of talk me through how it feels um, to see your fellow students not only arrested but also suspended? 
Yeah, it's, it's pretty sickening. Um, I, I refuse to take any uh, school administrator seriously when they uh, harp upon the safety of students, yet bring in the NYPD um, to put down a group of students, uh, a huge percentage of which are made up by black and brown and Arab brothers and sisters um, out here. So, I, I mean, it, it's very clearly politically motivated, um, a lot by the testimony that Manu Shafiq gave to Congress yesterday. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there, there's... I mean, Colombia has a long and storied history of student protests, and uh, her authorization of the NYPD, a, an organization that has very close ties with the Israeli Defense Force, trains along with the Israeli Defense Force, um, to, to have them come here and drag our students away is a spit in the face of all of the activism that's occurred at, on Columbia's campus. Yeah. And would you be able to talk a little bit more about what the demands are of um, students here today? Sure. Um, so we, our initial demands were um, transparency in the school's uh, uh, investments, um, divestment from Israel, and abandoning the plan to open a campus in Tel Aviv. Uh, amnesty for the students that have already been suspended for their activism. Um, and oof. Uh, that was the transparency. Ooh, what? Ooh, we can get back to uh, that. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, uh, um, uh, kind of repealing this academic censorship and, and um, uh, allowing professors to, to teach about Palestine in the classroom. Ooh. Yeah. And if you could uh, give a message to the president and um, to the administration of Columbia, what would that be? Uh, we're not leaving. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we know what we stand for. Um, we follow in the footsteps of a really proud legacy of Columbia students. And the admis Columbia University has again and again and again been on the wrong side of history. Um, and what she did today proves that nothing has changed. Um, and But student movements in the past have succeeded, and the student movement will also succeed, whether they like it or not. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So if you're just joining us, uh, I think the prayer has ended, and I think there's going to be a... Uh, there's going to be a program which we will stream. But yeah, if you're joining us just now, this is... Encampment number two at Columbia University. Um, the first encampment was crushed this morning. Um, the protesters were arrested. And immediately following their arrest, people, students that came out to the, the courtyard in support of, of the encampment occupied this lawn. So uh, the movement continues. And, you know... One thing that we, we sort of notice when it comes to, to repression is that it, it doesn't work a lot of the time. You know, they came down with these, with these arrests. They, they tried to crush the first encampment. And look at what's happened. <laughs> this is way bigger than the first encampment by hundreds and hundreds of people. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of people here. But uh, the first encampment was maybe only 40 or 50. So... You know, this has kind of become a national story almost because uh, of Manoush Shafiq, Columbia University president's uh, orders to arrest her own students. I don't think a lot of the students would be here right now if it wasn't for those arrests. So I think we're going to start with the program here now. Um, John, do you want to switch to the Let's shop remember! Shop? That though we've been having so we're switch audio day, sources here. We've had music, we've had poetry. We're here for one cause. After me! Rip me after me! Gather around the mic! 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 We have programming for the rest of the evening as we wait for our comrades to return from their arrests. 
Before I pass off the mic, I want to remind you why we're here and what our demands are. If we're all around the mic, we can cut the people's mic, folks, if you can hear. Um, we know that this university, as been said so many times before, is materially invested in the genocide and the displacement of Palestinians throughout occupied Palestine. The foremost demand of the Gaza Solidarity Encampment was full financial divestment from the bloody corporations that are raining bombs down on the heads of our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Shame! So I want you to remember this chant and remember it well because it tells the world what Quad's goal is. Disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest. Disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest. Disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest. Disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest. Disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest. Disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest. Disclose, divest. Disclose, divest! We will not stop, we will not rest! Disclose, divest! We will not stop, we will not rest! Disclose, divest! We will not stop, we will not rest! Disclose, divest! We will not stop, we will not rest! Disclose, divest! We will not stop, we will not rest! Disclose, divest! We will not Palestine. Free, free, free 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 Palestine. Free, free, free
we're going to get on with the programming for the night. Are we tired? No. Are we tired? No. Amazing. Next up, we have Bill from Pal Auda, who's a longtime organizer. He is a resident, longtime resident of this area as well. He was around in the 1968 protests, and he's going to talk to us more about how our struggle is built on the history of those who came before us, those who struggled before us. This is a historic moment indeed, but that is because we are always learning and growing and educating ourselves and organizing in ways that builds on those who came before us. And we honor their legacies today by being here, by listening, by learning, by organizing some more and holding our ground against this fascist institution. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free it's great to be out here with you all tonight because you are making history. I'm not a student at Columbia. My only connection with this institution is that I pay them too much rent. I grew up in this neighborhood and most of the people I grew up with have since been evicted as Columbia takes more and more land But I, but I was a 13-year-old kid here in 1968 when the students at Columbia took a stand against this institution that people here call the demon. They took a stand for Harlem. They took a stand for the community. They took a stand for Vietnam. <laughs> Columbia was trying to steal Morningside, Heights, Morningside Park for Harlem. And the students, as you may know, occupied five buildings low, Hamilton, Fairweather, Avery, and Math. It was the Black Student Union and the Students for Democratic Society. And the Board of Trustees, which then as now represented the biggest real estate interests in the city, responded with extreme violence. They sent in the tactical patrol force, like the, it's a lot like the strategic response group today, they came in, they not only arrested, but they brutally beat hundreds of students who were then expelled. They put people in the hospital. They occupied the neighborhood for six months. They just went rampage through the neighborhood, beating up people on the street. This is the cops. But the students and the community won. <laughs> Columbia was forced to back down which is why we still have Morningside, Morningside Park there. And 1968 was a pivotal year. The Columbia student strike was a big part of that year that saw the Tet Offensive in Vietnam, that saw the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, that saw people confronting the Democratic Convention in Chicago. It was a turning point in the movement against the Vietnam War, and six years later, Vietnam won. The United States was forced to withdraw. And now you are part of a movement that has put Palestine, as it should be, at the center of U.S. political life. And Palestine will win. And it will be because of the heroic people of Gaza, of the West Bank, of all of Palestine, the people of Yemen, of Lebanon, of Iran, and the mass movement around the world, including here. Because it's all one struggle. I want to mention that Manu Shafiq, she is the, the, the brute, 68 was such a setback that no one has, no president has dared to bring the NYPD on the campus in force since then. And this, this person, this Baroness, Dame Commander of, Order of, the, of the Order of the British Empire, former Vice President of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, <laughs> is doing a job for her, for, for her bosses on Wall Street and for the big real estate interests here who run the Columbia Board of Trustees and are very connected with the land theft in Palestine. 
So it's great to see you here. Stay strong. There's only one way, and that's forward. Together, we will win. As, as grim as it may seem, imperialism will be defeated. Palestine will be free. The world will be free. So, thank you. Free, free Palestine. Columbia alum, a proud SJP and CUAD alum, and an organizer with the Palestinian Youth Movement, Layla. From the river to the sea!
got the trip on the line. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Layla. Woo! Next up, we have a fellow comrade and organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation, Mustafa. Woo! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! And we will free Palestine! We will free Palestine! Within our lifetime! Within our lifetime! Hello, everyone. It is... I'm almost speechless to have the words to describe how I feel at this current moment. Something I've been thinking about a lot recently, and especially today. This moment, this movement, has been going on for more than six months. And especially for a movement that goes on for this long, especially one as unprecedented as the one that we have all been working in for the liberation of Palestine, there are times when we can get lost in the minutia of the movement and the organizing, showing up every day, talking to our friends and families, having those really exhausting conversations that everyone, we believe, should be able to intuitively understand. Genocide is wrong! <laughs> Comrades and friends, we continue to live in this unprecedented moment. There are reports that are, Israel has retaliated against Iran. Shame. Shame! The necessity of our actions, the necessity of our solidarity with Palestine, the necessity of our solidarity with the rest of the movement in the United States, with the rest of the students fighting for divestment from Israel, is more important now than it ever has been. Because we will not stop and we will not rest until every single university, every single institution has divested from the genocidal nuclear state that is Israel. Because this moment, everyone who is a part of this moment, everyone who is standing on this ground, everyone who has been a part of it since October 8th, the day after October 7th, we know that we will not stand for a war. We will not stand for a war with Iran or any of the Israel's of Pal allies of Palestine. We will not stand for it. We will not stand for war. We will not stand for the U.S. aggression. We will not stand for U.S. imperialism. Not today, not anymore, not ever again. <laughs> you have to think about I think a lot about the fact I was having a conversation earlier with a friend. At times we feel like we are the objects of history. Sometimes things feel like they're happening to us. That we're just somewhat moving through the motions of the currents of history. Our goal and our objective must be to become the subjects of history. The ones who write history, not the ones who are subjected to history. <laughs> And we are doing that right now. As Bill mentioned, there has not been an action as unprecedented as this since 1968. We are making history that has never been made before for almost a century. And our goal must be to continue making that history until there is no longer history to be made until liberation is a word that becomes obsolete because all of the people, all the oppressed people of the global south, of Palestine, of Sudan, of the Congo, every one of us, all of us are liberated. <laughs> and one day that term will become obsolete because of the people who are standing here, because of the people who are dedicating their lives and that is what makes us, makes you a comrade. There's a difference between an ally and a comrade. 
A comrade is one who dedicates their entire life, not just words, not just donations and money, but dedicates their entire life and their work and their movement to the cause of liberation. And I believe, I truly believe, today and every day after I see movements and actions like this, I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win!
the Palestinian youth movement who is going to share a little bit more about Walid Daqqa, Allah Yirhamu, who was martyred recently in Zionist prisons. And we will hear more about his life and his journey and his revolutionary optimism and struggle from Basim. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me? It's important for us to remember before our brave Columbia students put together their encampment, that yesterday was Palestinian Prisoners Day. And it's important, yeah, yeah, let's cheer to that. And it's important, especially in a moment like this, in a moment like this one for our movement, that we ground in the legacy of resistance from our Palestinian prisoners and their revolutionary optimism. We learn it from no one else better than our prisoners who have been a foundational demand from the movement here and from the resistance in Palestine. I'm going to read a little bit about Walid Daqqa, Allah Yirham Trabo, who passed away very recently. He was actually it, it's, it's probably more accurate to say he was murdered. He was left to die with cancer in prison. Shame. Shame. Walid Daqqa was a bright and brilliant revolutionary who left us with a wealth of beautiful writing and a wealth of struggle and experience. I'm going to read you all some of his words so we can ground in these words today, so we can rem remember him today, tomorrow, and every single day that we take to the streets until Palestine is free from the river to the sea. Okay, this is Walid Daqqa. I write to a child who has not yet been born. I write to an idea or a dream that unwittingly terrifies the jailer before it even comes to fruition. I write to any child. I write to my son who has not yet come into life. I write to the, to the birth of the future. That's how I want to name him or her. And that's how I want the future to know us. Dear Milad, which is the Arabic term for birth. Today marks the end of my 25th year in prison. 9,131 days and a quarter. It is a number that does not end at a certain point. It is my age of incarceration that has not yet ended. And here I am, reaching 50, with half of my life spent in prison and the other half in life. The days have engulfed each other. With each day I spent in prison, flipping through the pages of my life like a bag trying to empty what remains of my memory. The prison, like fire, feeds on the wreckage of memory. And my memory, you are my message to the future. After prison months sucked the nectar of the life months and the prison years equated with the life years. Do you think, my dear, that I have gone mad? Writing a letter to a creature who has not yet been born? Which one of us is mad? A nuclear state that fights a yet-to-be-born child, deeming them a security threat, making him present in its intelligence reports and court pleadings? Or is it mad to dream of a child? Which one is madness? To write a letter to a dream or to have the dream become a file in the hands of Israeli intelligence? 
You, my dear, now have a security file in the Israeli Shin Bet's archive. What do you think? Should I stop dreaming? I will continue to dream despite the bitterness of reality. And I will search for meaning in life despite what I have lost of it. They dig up the graves of ancestors in search of presumed authenticity, while we search for a better future for our grandchildren. Undoubtedly, it is coming. Peace, Inad. Peace, my dear. Thank you all. Free, free Palestine! Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. In our thousands, in our millions. In our thousands, in our millions. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. In our millions, in our millions. We are all Walid Dakha. 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 Thank you. Free our prisoners, free them all. Free our prisoners, free them all. Zionism will fall. Zionism will fall. Free our prisoners, free them all. Free our prisoners, free them all. to come to the lawn and join us. We have plenty of snacks, plenty of food, and... No. <laughs> okay, um, so tell all your friends to come, please, okay? Um, I'm gonna share a speech that I wrote for the February 2nd, 2024 rally that was in response to the skunk attack, the chemical weapon that was used on our students here at Columbia. I, I never got to read this speech out loud because on that day of that protest, Columbia University called the NYPD outside the gates and hunted us down. We were running from place to place. We weren't allowed to use the mic and they silenced our voices that day. But today, everyone here is proof that they will never be able to silence us for more than, I don't know, like an hour or something. So, so, Okay, so I'm gonna read my speech. Columbia University is complicit in the genocide of the Palestinian people. Columbia University invests in iShares ETFs, which hold assets in companies like Boeing, General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, and Raytheon. All of these companies develop and manufacture weapons for the Israeli military. Columbia University, not only is an active participant in the genocide of the Palestinian people, but Colombia simultaneously refuses to consider its Palestinian students worthy of any humility or acknowledgement. Shame! President Manu Shafiq continuously refused to say the word Palestinian in her emails of concern. The dehumanization of Palestinian students and their allies, along with Colombia's blatant and disgusting participation in the genocide through its investments, has created a violent environment for Palestinian students, their, their allies, and visibly Muslim, black, and brown students on this campus. A campus that preaches safety and locks the gates every time there is a protest is the same campus where students were attacked with skunk spray 
simply while acting within their constitutional right. Being Palestinian on Columbia's campus means walking around with a target on your back, having to decide whether or not you want to deal with the consequences of wearing your kofiya to school or a sweatshirt that supports, that shows support for Palestine. Being Palestinian on Columbia's campus means that you do not get, do not get to speak your truth without risking disciplinary action or doxing. All of this while simultaneously grieving family in Gaza watching Palestinian bodies be mutilated on camera and hearing the horrifying statistics grow in number every single day. What we have been through at Columbia is not one fraction of what our families go through back home. Gaza keeps us alive and Gaza is alive. The resistance, the people, the culture. In the words of Rafiq Ziada, we teach life. Gaza continues to teach us what it means to resist, resist despite all odds what it means to have faith, what it means to fully live every single moment that you have on this earth. The resilience of the Palestinian people back home is what strengthens us every day to continue to speak out. It is our duty as we are all complicit. Palestine is our roots and Palestine is our land and it is the water that makes us grow. We will continue to fight until the day Palestine is free until we can go back to our rightful lands and until we return. Glory to our martyrs and glory to Palestine. Thank you. We will honor all our martyrs. We will honor all our martyrs. All our children, sons, and daughters. Two. 
even if you may not recognize, even if you may not see, our efforts build. And we may not see a free Palestine today, but we will certainly see it tomorrow. And your efforts will be commended in the years to come like those who came before you. You students are part of a proud tradition of Columbia protest and Palestinian revolt. As alumni, we salute these courageous, brave, stubborn students who, after all your peers were arrested, jumped the fence to take another occupation. someone just hold on I think it's really good that we're together we're connected we're holding on to each other we're here for each other thank you it's even cold so it's even good to be next to someone cuddle up um, my name is Tommy C I am a member of BOSS which is Barnard's organization of soul and solidarity we are Barnard's only black organization and we stand on the box of our founders from the 1968. Yeah. As a student, today has been a lot. Today has been a lot in the violence that we've seen against our fellow students. Today has been a lot in just seeing how much the university doesn't give a shit about us. But I called you guys my friends earlier because it is genuinely so heartwarming to see everyone here. Everyone here has said that enough is enough. Everyone here has said that business cannot go on as usual. And I just, it just makes me I want to stand on the words of our fellow comrades before, Comrade West and Comrade India Moore, that love is at the center of resistance. Yeah. We would not be here if we didn't love someone, if we didn't love being alive, if we didn't love life, none of us would be here. 
And I yeah. feel like that is just something that we need to keep with us, that we need to take with us. And I'm just really so grateful to see you all here. I hope you guys stay. I hope that, honestly, like, Palestine will be free, Sudan will be free, Congo will be free, Atlanta will be free, Ferguson will be free, Baltimore will be free, everyone will be free because love to resist is to love and to love is to resist and that is the center of every movement and that is the center of everything that we're doing here. And I'm so, so grateful to see you guys. I'm so, so grateful for you all, genuinely. And we were brought on here to kind of talk about the connection with our struggles, I mean, we don't have to tell you guys that the NYPD are being trained with the same tactics that the IOF are being trained for. We don't have to tell you that Cop City is just like Israel, it's just like what they're doing in Palestine. We, we know that. And we're here because of that. And we're going to stay here because of that. And we're not going to leave here because of that. So I'm going to give it to Kepra, but I, I just literally, like, I feel like especially these past few months, it's been crazy to me that things have just been going on so normal when nothing has felt normal. We've still had classes, we've still had yeah. assignments. Professors have just been never talking about this in class, acting like this doesn't exist. And it's generally felt so insane. But I'm so glad that everything is literally stopping right now and we're all looking at each other in the face and seeing that there's an issue here that needs to be remedied. So thank you all so much. Hello, everyone. Um, hey. Um, I just want to echo what people have been saying. We're here because we're standing on the shoulders of people who have come before us, comrades who have come before us, everybody who has fought the 1968 sit-in and stand-in in Hamilton Hall. Like, we're, we're on the shoulders of giants as we do this, and it's something to feel empowered by. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit of history about some... Um, some sit-ins that have been that have been organized by Black students on campus. Um, yeah, just a little a teaching moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So in 1982, students organized the Columbia chapter of a coalition for a free South Africa. Columbia students of the org were specifically demanding for the university to divest from poor apartheid corporations. Um, money is the only language that Columbia knows how to speak. So CFSA members appealed to the Student Senate, the largest governing body on campus at the time, to support their movement on Columbia's divestment. After the university's inaction, seven leaders of the coalition started a hunger strike. Their largest resistance was a march paired with a blockade that disrupted entry into Hamilton Hall. The blockade began on April 4th, 1985, and up to 1,000 students occupied the Hamilton Steps daily in its peak. On the first day of the blockade, the coalition invited Jesse Jackson and Desmond Tutu to speak with about 5,000 people in attendance. Woo! The blockade continued until the CFSA were invited to a panel to discuss Columbia's divestiture on April 25th, but it took the university until October 7th to finally divest the remainder of their investments into pro-apartheid corporations. Shame. 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 There's many things that we can take from Columbia's history. The trustees of this university show no investment, have historically shown no investment into the benefit of the students. Um, direct action wasn't made months later until October. Um, yeah, Columbia has a history of intimidating, ignoring, and divesting student group organizations for change on its campuses. But we have the power to stop it. Um, and March 22nd, 1987, Mike Jones, who is a black student who has been harassed by his white football teammates, he made an effort to confront this teammates and it, the conversation escalated um, and carried on to Broadway. He was hospitalized in the confrontation um, and the concerned black students of Columbia formed in lieu of this violence. Um, the events were primarily focused on his injuries, but it evolved into a larger, larger list of demands. Um, they organized various rallies with crowds of over 600 protesters and commemorated moments in black history like the assassinated, assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. And on April 21st, they organized a sit-in in Hamilton Hall, chaining the doors closed for 12 hours before being broken up by NYPD. Some students were identified and received disciplinary action, 
which was common for black students at the time. Um, a March 24th article um, in, Spe in the Spectre titled Rationalism, Not Radicalism is the Way Out of Racism told the events in a way that villainized black students. Yay. 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 I think it's so important that we put our stories out there, especially given the hearing yesterday, yes. the lies that were being told lies. by, by Minutia Seek, lying on our students' model in a, such a perverse way that twists it, it's actually the opposite of what's going on, comparing us to white supremacists is really insane. So we really need to put our stories out there. What is like the daily life of being a pro-Palestinian and black student on campus? It's, it's hard, it's rough, and they're twisting it around. So telling the stories are so, so important. And knowing our history is so, so important. So one thing I feel like I want everyone to really take from this is that mutual aid will save us all. Like, today, everything you've eaten, all the blankets you have, all the emergency, all the hand warmers came from the community. Yeah. The community will always have you, and the community will always support you. Yeah. So, before me and Kep go, you want to sing a little song? So, you guys know the song, you guys know? Your feet full are my feet Okay, so, okay, let's start. Three, two, one, let's go. Where you go, I will go, my friend. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, my friend. Where you go, I will go. Your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Our struggles align. Where you go, I will go, my friend. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, my friend. Y'all better remember this song from last time, okay? We don't. Uh, I don't. Okay. Okay. That's okay, that's okay, I'll do it again. So, let me think. Um, so, let's start. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it goes like this. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Okay, repeat. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's standing by the water, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved.
shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. The people are behind us. We shall not be moved. The people are behind us. We shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. If we all stand together, we shall not be moved. If we all stand together, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. All people, all people are together. We shall not be moved. All people are together. We shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. One more time. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the water. Thank you so much for sharing these beautiful stories, our important history. And next up, we have a student with the public health and an organizer.
Lovers and comrades, uh, my name is Devika, and I am a visiting fellow at Cornell. I'm here for a conference, and uh, in Cornell, there's a coalition for mutual liberation that's uh, also fighting a fight for divestment at the university. And also, a few weeks ago, we also had students who got arrested by the Cornell police and the Ithaca police. And it's it's uh, and we from uh, coalition for mutual liberation also would like to say that we stand in solidarity with our fellow protesting students at Columbia, at NYU, at universities across campuses. At universities across campuses, across countries, across regions. And we, we come here in, so, in solidarity with all of you. And I would also just like to say I'm not from the US, I'm from India. And we've also seen how these countries like India have for years and years changed its project towards the Zionistic project of the state of Israel. Yeah. And we're seeing increasingly how countries like India have been furthering the cause of Israel through its own propaganda of Hindutva politics that's ongoing in India right now. Yeah. And as we fight, as we fight fascist forces across the world, across the globe, our, our struggles, our protests are connected and we fight for liberation for one and for all. So with that, I'd like to kind of come to a small chant, uh, which I think a lot of you might know or might not know. It's the slogan of Azadi, which means freedom. And if people would like to join in, I'll say a few lines and you got to respond by saying Azadi. Okay. So if so whenever I say like, Hum kya chate, what do we want? And we shout Azadi, which means liberation and freedom. So um, different people might know from different contexts, but here we go. And if there's someone at the Duffley, we could yeah, go I'll for it as well. Aray, hum kya chate? Azadi! Aray, hum kya chate? Azadi! Aray, Palestine ki? Azadi! Aray, Palestine ki? Azadi! Aray, Chin ki lenge? Azadi! Aray, Chin ki lenge? Azadi!
town who is also a healthcare worker. So who is who is from healthcare workers in Palestine? No, it's okay. Min al mayal al mayal. Honestly, I commend you. The fear that they have stricken within their hearts is honestly, it's honestly awe-inspiring because they called FBI, they called PIs, they called the NYPD. They have nothing but fear. They have nothing but fear. And quite honestly, where we were at in 2012 till 2016 when I was at Columbia and where we're at now, what the students here are facing is immeasurable, quite honestly. And I commend everyone here that's staying out here in solidarity with their comrades. This show of support, this show of solidarity is key in any struggle for liberation. So please, everyone, give it up to all the Columbia students and all the Barnard students. Back in, 20, back in 2016, there was a, the, the, you know, the campaign for, oh, cool. Uh, back in 2016, the campaign for divestment, the apartheid divestment campaign, was uh, concurrent with the prison divest campaign. If you're not familiar, back in 2016, a group of student organizers that, you know, some of them are actually here today, we got together. All these divestment campaigns stood together in solidarity, worked with one another, and the divestment campaign from private prisons and the prison industrial complex was successful at Columbia in 2016. And guess what? This divestment campaign will be successful. This divestment campaign will be successful. To close, divest. We will not stop, we will not rest. divest. We will not stop, we will not rest. once again. Y'all staying here? Yeah. Are y'all staying here? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I really just want to say one more time how proud I am of the students. This is this is really a stance that we've taken against all of America, all of imperial powers in America. All these things that Columbia University represents, especially as the largest private landowner in all of New York City. They got $18 billion to gentrify Harlem. You know what? We're going to take the lawn, actually. We'll take your fucking lawn. And it's so essential to stay standing in solidarity with our, uh, with our comrades that have currently been arrested. Columbia SJP, JVP, all the coalition organizations, the apartheid divest movement, I commend all of you. They have gotten a lot of shit from these administrators, a lot of surveillance. That's what they're doing to a bunch of 18 to 22 year olds. They are fucking shaking in their boots. Shame on them, shame on them. 
Honestly, I love seeing her get embarrassed at the trial. I don't know about you. No, 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 no. <laughs> and um, okay. all I want to say is I'm really just happy to be in community with each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for standing for Palestine. Thank you for standing with our people. God bless all of you. Okay. <laughs> all right. right. Y'all trying to chant? Yeah. Say it loud and say it clear. Stand by, folks. We're just going to switch our audio real quick. Uh, testing, testing. All right, we're good. Um, okay, so we're back uh, out in the crowd of uh, five minutes. Oh, five, five minutes? Yep. Um, okay, so we're back uh, outside the rally that's happening here at the Columbia, at the second Columbia encampment uh, for those who have been following along uh, with the first Columbia encampment. They were all arrested this morning, and this was uh, the culmination of six months of struggle at Columbia University, the, uh, the Palestinian groups on campus were demanding divestment from Israel, and they felt that the university was moving too slowly, and they decided to escalate by occupying this lawn on the other side over there, which you can see, and uh, they, they started their encampment yesterday at, at four in the morning. And they went all through yesterday until today at around 3 p.m. when they were arrested by the NYPD. And this encampment was uh, modeled after the 1968 encampment in protest of the Vietnam War. And after that encampment took place, uh, the NYPD was barred. They were barred by the school from entering campus. But this, this morning, Manu Shafiq, the president of Columbia University, who's been uh, testifying in front of Congress. She's been getting grilled by Congress. She sent out an email basically authorizing NYPD to come on campus and arrest her own students. So when that happened, um, this, this uh, encampment, which was on this lawn over here, there were people surrounding uh, this, this entire encampment. There were students, sympathetic students, and they actually decided to hop this fence right here, the, the fence right in front, and now they're here. And the size of this, the size of this protest has grown tremendously. Uh, the first encampment was about 40 people. There are several hundreds, and as you can see, they're, they're, they're here to stay. I mean, they've got blankets, they've got food, they've got snacks, they've got everything they need. They're getting... Uh, coffee and in hot cocoa and stuff like that but uh so we're gonna just continue with our stream here sorry i just need to my uh grip got detached but we're gonna be moving to an interview here hello uh can you tell us what brought you out here tonight and today i believe you were in the first encampment as well yeah, so I, I didn't actually sleep over in the first encampment, um, but the first night I was um, delivering supplies to my friends, my comrades who were um, who were organizers of the first encampment, um, who stayed over last night and who were arrested. So I actually was not part of the organizing yesterday, um, but I've decided to stay. I've been here since really early in the morning. 
um, and since the you know second encampment has begun, um, I've you know I've I've decided to stay, just as hundreds of other um, Columbia students have. Yeah, and can you tell us about that experience of seeing everyone? I mean, hundred over a hundred of your fellow classmates were arrested. Um, seeing everybody kind of jump the the bush here and join um, and start this second encampment. What was that? What was that like? Yeah. I mean, it was incredible. Um, so the students from the first encampment were arrested around like 1 or 2 p.m. today. Um, and, you know, early in the morning at like 8 o'clock, there weren't all that many folks around. It was the core organizers who had stayed overnight. Um, and then by the time that, you know, folks suspected that the students were going to get arrested, like the place was just mobs. There were like hundreds and hundreds of students all surrounding the encampment in defense of the encampment, um, like screaming shame at the police officers that had like infiltrated the area. Um, and, you know, I think today the, the organizers of the first encampment and their sacrifice, their meticulous organization, their trust in each other and their coordination has just encouraged so many other students to come off the sidelines and make an encampment of our own in a way that is so inspiring. And I think the way that the organization of the first encampment has inspired all of this happening right now is like nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, what it, in the moment now here, we have the program, there's gonna be dancers soon energy is very high. Can you speak to what it means to have everybody still out here tonight despite that repression and um, keeping it going? Oh yeah, it's so inspiring, especially seeing the progression of the character and the intensity of the organizing at Columbia since the beginning of the school year, um, since after October 7th. It's, there's really been a couple of fundamental shifts. I mean, in the beginning of the year, um, the protests were planned, you know, essentially in coordination with the university administration. They were, I, I would characterize them as like polite, you know, um, and they, you know, we wanted to make a, some sort of stand for Palestine, but it was, um, it, it, it played by the university's rules. Um, and when we were playing by the university's rules, um, their restrictions on us became more and more stringent. Um, and since then, I think there's been, uh, and as the repression of the university got more intense on the students that were organizing, um, the organized rebellion against that repression got more and more intense to the point where we're right here today. Um, and so I think it's so incredible to see not only that gradual shift to a more intense and more militant organizing on campus, but to see the fundamental shift um, in you know, the regular everyday student's belief in the power of organization, um, I think has really come to a head today with the development of the second encampment. And what has it been like as a student? You got an email from your president, was that today? Yeah. Um, and we've, we've seen this response from the administration um, also using graduation as a pretext for graduation, which I believe is in two weeks? In a couple of weeks, um, yeah. So, as a student, and you're seeing your administration respond to um, the protests this way, what does that feel like? Yeah, um, I mean, it's incredibly frustrating, right? We got an email today, five minutes into when the NYPD began making arrests on the students, um, from Manu Shafiq, the president of Columbia, um, stating that she just had no other choice. She had to arrest the students. She had to let the NYPD in to arrest the students for the safety of like a proper learning environment for everybody, um, which is absolutely insane, right? Because what about the, the safety of Palestinian and Muslim and Arab students? Um, and so to see, to see that response as we're watching our bravest students get arrested, um, the contradictions could not be more on full display. Um, and so, you know, I think the, the juxtaposition of the hypocrisy of Manu Shafiq in that moment and the, the complete steadfastness of those students and them acting uh, in accordance with their values, I think really inspired, um, you know, students to make the second encampment. And if you had a message, if you could um, speak to the president, what would you, the president of Columbia, what would you say? You know, I would... I would say, 
Capitalists are their own grave diggers. The, <laughs> the stronger, <laughs> the stronger the repression is on the students, the stronger the resistance and the sharper the organization of the resistance. And we see that no clearer than at Columbia University, um, where they've, what do we call it? They've like removed the sanction, what do you call it? They, they cut off JVP and SJP. Um, you know, in the first semester of organizing for Palestine. Um, and to see that this is the epicenter of the student movement right now, um, we, we can see so clearly that when the, the rulers try to repress people that are trying to take a stand, we just get sharper and we just get stronger. Yeah, and are you, are you a student here as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Yeah, can you tell me how long have you been out here? So I've been out here since about um, 7 p.m., but before that I was outside with, um, I think it's within our lifetime. They were marching outside as well, so kind of just around the block um, or again and again and again. For a few hours I was doing that because it was so inspiring and amazing to see. I mean, obviously the crowd here is huge. I don't know if you guys have been outside, but the crowd is, if not bigger, it's insane. Um, we were taking the streets, and that was really inspiring because that outside was the picture of solidarity. So no matter what happens here, people outside are standing as well. It doesn't matter if there's a gate or a fence that they can't get in. There's hundreds of feet in between. They're still standing just as strong with us. So it was really beautiful to see. But, yeah, I've been here for a while today, yeah. Yeah, and what has that experience been like? To, to Were you here for the arrests as well? I mean, to see that repression happen, to see people jump in and fill in um, after their fellow class classmates had been arrested. What has that been like? Yeah, so I actually wasn't here for the arrest. I was at work and I was really under, t under the table on my phone itching to come here. And then I got out early and I just came right here. My friends and I were on the same consensus. We we're like, yeah, we need to get to Columbia right now. People I know who don't even go to Columbia, um, honestly, a lot of people who are here aren't students. They've stuck in, which I think is completely fine and we accept. I know people who are helping people sneak. I don't know if I should be saying that. Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, it's just so beautiful to see the sense of urgency in everybody. The second, even before those students were being arrested, but just the prompt of their arrest also just inspired so many more people to come. And just seeing that, I think it just reinstates some much needed hope in all of us, especially against the administration. It really is true that the people united will never be defeated. And we see that right now. No scare tactics, nothing is taking the people away from here. So that has been really awesome. Yeah. And what brought, what brought you out here? Yeah, I think just the same thing. The fact that we all feel so passionately about this. And, you know, I truly feel like we're going to reach our goals because there's no way that we can't. You can't say no to this amount of strength, this many people, this much resilience. So um, it's just our duty to be here. We can, so we should be. There's really no excuse not to be. I've been on every social media. Like, if your ass isn't here, where the fuck are you? Like, where the fuck are you if you're not here? You know, like. Where the fuck are you if you're not here? It doesn't make any sense. Like, everybody should be here. There's no reason not to be. It's the least we can do for our brothers and sisters. Everything that's going on in Palestine, this is the least we can do. We have food, water. We have everything we need here. This is comfortable, you know? And for what they're going through, Colombia needs to divest. It's not fair. It, it needs to happen. There's just, there's no excuses. These things need to happen, so we have to be here. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. For the record, it's pretty cold out here, but, you know, that is the spirit of the people here, that there is nothing, there is no repression, there is no weather condition, there is no level of hunger or thirst that they could endure that would stop them, and that things things are way, way worse in Gaza. Um, so for those who are joining us right now, uh, we're at the encampment, we're at the Columbia University encampment. Uh, some of you breakthrough news fans, I'm sure you're all you're all following the news closely. That uh, Israel has just bombed Iran. Uh, they've bombed apparently uh, a military base or uh, a town near Iran's nuclear facility. But Iran has already pledged to retaliate uh, in self-defense. They they've said that they would they would respond immediately. So. You know, uh, that has already been brought up at the rally here, uh, and there's a sort of escalated level feeling of, of tension right now. Um, and obviously things really could not be tenser, and this could seriously 
set off a chain of, of retaliations that leads to to a, a regional war. And of course, you know, that's that's what Israel wants. So we're following that too. Don't worry. And, and you know, as we see things roll in, we'll we'll let you know on the live stream. But again, we're here at the second Columbia encampment. The first one, uh, if you've been following, was uh, destroyed. It was the 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 protesters were were uh, arrested by the NYPD, and uh, students have basically formed their second camp. And I think we have another interview here. Yes, we are. <laughs> Yeah, so can you um, tell me, I was just talking to you a little bit about it, but um, you were part of the picket today that was surrounding um, the first encampment as the arrest took place. So could you talk to me about that experience, about being with hundreds of people um, and watching your fellow students uh, get arrested? Yeah, so I mean, there's two two ways to look at it. And one, in one way, we were obviously deeply disgusted and hurt that our fellow students were being arrested, that our own administration, um, first of all, goes in front of Congress yesterday, throws uh, all of us under the bus, bragging about their suspension and um, like mistreatment of pro-Palestinian students. And then they come here and they send the NYPD in on their own students. I mean, it's deeply disgusting, but it, at the same time, it was beautiful that there were so many students who come from all kinds of diverse backgrounds you look in the crowd everyone looks different everyone was locked arms and we were moving around and chanting I mean felt kind of hopeless in that or helpless in that moment but at the same time we know that our strength comes in numbers and that we protect us and we keep us safe so we're just trying to focus on that and clearly uh, the, they might have arrested a few of us but most of them are back out and uh, people are here so yeah yeah and that that repression I mean seeing what is it um, we saw today, too, that your, the president um, emailed students as well uh, and also using the pretext of graduation as a means to, and safety, of course, for clearing out um, the protests. But could you talk to me a little bit more about what it feels like as a student here to have that response from your administration, um, especially as she testifies in front of Congress, as you already said as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they say they're trying to do this to keep us safe, but who are they really keeping safe? Who are they prioritizing keeping safe? Because calling in the NYPD on your uh, students who the group is mostly, you know, black and brown students, I don't think that's the best way to handle safety, you know. If a student's breaking your school rules, you're calling in the cops, it just it really doesn't make sense. And we understand that, um, you know, pressure's on her from all kinds of people, and that's why she is escalating her violence towards students. But it's really disgusting, and I really wonder how she, I mean, with all due respect, how is she going to bed at night knowing she's inciting violence on her own students? It's honestly pathetic. And this repression, these threats from both the NYPD and as well as uh, the school administration, I mean, those have been pretty, I mean, we're surrounded by drones as well. Um, but could you talk about the feeling of being here tonight and, you know, the response of students who are in the face of this repression um, coming out tonight and, and staying strong? Yeah, I mean, the group sent from the afternoon after the arrest, the group quadrupled in size and has remained um, giant, giant ever since. So vibes are up, vibes will not be killed, and uh, I mean, the movement will not be killed, Palestine will be free, and until then, we will be here, and we will be um, protesting and standing in solidarity until, for as long as we have to. And can you tell me what brought you out uh, today? Yeah, so I'm a student of public health, and um, I've been deeply disturbed at, at the silence, the repression on our at our school truly disgusting and someone who especially is in a field like public health they're like I just feel like there needs to be discussions about this about the genocide that's going on and so what brought me out is truly a deep-rooted um, uh, desire for justice for justice for all people especially um, for Palestinians so we just free the people free the land So we're just continuing on here. And, you know, that student said that the numbers have quadrupled, and that is 100% true. 
uh, the repression has only has only increased the turnout, and I think it's increased the frustration with uh, the school administration that Manu Shafiq has broken. Uh, what is it? I I math on the fly. What o over fifty years of precedent of not allowing the NYPD on campus. She has broken with that and ordered the arrest, authorized the arrest of her own students. And, you know, it's all because, it's obviously because of the pressure that she's been facing uh, with this congressional hearing, getting grilled in the U.S. Congress, uh, being told everything but, you know, fire the professors that support Palestine. So, uh, you know, it's, we're really in unprecedented territory. This is the banner from the first uh, encampment, which I guess was preserved somehow because everything at that encampment was destroyed. There are pictures online. They were throwing uh, students' belongings out. They threw everything out. Um, I saw it. There's a video of it on, on, our, on our Twitter page. But as you can see with this banner, um, the encampment here is calling on others to join. They're calling on others to join. Um, they've taped some Palestinian flags on the on the ground here, and there's some people rallying. But uh, apparently, uh, they have plans to stay here all night. We were told that there are dance teams coming. I'm not sure what that means. I guess we'll figure it out. And they're also going to have movie screenings. Uh, so they're definitely staying here for the long haul. Um, so we're gonna stay. We're gonna stay with this as long as possible. But Okay, someone just came up and told me the dance dance teams are happening at midnight. So um, I don't know if that's a Columbia dance team or if it's going to be, you know, maybe maybe they're hiring people to perform. Who knows? Um, but uh, speaking of which, I think there's a, there's a great need right now for warm clothes. Uh, if anyone in the New York City area is watching, um, I believe there was a call put out for, like, blankets and... I think like gloves and, and hats and that sort of thing. So uh, it's incredible the amount of uh, support these students have gotten. They they've been they've been collecting donations for some time, and you you know you should have seen the the amount of food at the first encampment. I mean, <laughs> you know people kept bringing food just in solidarity, and it was almost like we have no idea what to do with it and. Uh, a lot of it was thrown out by by the NYPD, but we're gonna keep going here. Um, I don't know if folks are joining us right now, but uh, this is the second Columbia University encampment for Palestine. It was formed shortly after the first encampment was shut down by the NYPD, and uh, yeah, basically people took it upon themselves to occupy this lawn the first encampment was on that lawn and it was shut down uh today at around 3 p.m when the nypd was let on campus to arrest students uh let on campus by manu shafiq the university president and uh yeah the students basically just hopped the fence and took this took over this lawn and they don't seem to want to leave so uh, we are going to stick with them. We're going to stick with these folks. And, you know, they look, they look pretty happy. I mean, look at this guy. He's just lying down. Uh, looks like he doesn't have a care in the world. Well, I'm, okay, I'm sure he cares. He's probably very, uh, you know, concerned with what's happening in Palestine. But people here are very, you know, they're, um, they're happy to stay. And... You know, we, we're not really hearing too many people, uh, uh, you know, talk about going home or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, there are literally hundreds of people here at Columbia University. And the crowd back there, they're chanting, Manu Shafiq, go to hell. Manu Shafiq is... The Columbia University president who broke 50 years of precedent and allowed the NYPD to arrest her own students. 
but we're just gonna keep walking around. This building here is the library. It's really nice. Um, they have some Greek thinkers' names. The uh, Aristotelians written on top. Um, and this campus is totally locked down, by the way. Uh, and, you know, that was a theme of many of the speeches given earlier is just the... Sorry, I'm just going to put this on my shirt. That was a big theme of... Uh, the speeches given was how afraid Columbia University is of these students. Um, the fact that they broke with 50 years of precedent, I think, just goes to show that they're really afraid. Manu Shafiq is afraid, obviously. She's, uh, you know, under, uh, she's being, you know, grilled by Congress. So this is the last thing I think they wanted, <laughs> was for the encampment to, to quadruple in size. But uh, we're going to stay here with the encampment. I think uh, Emily, our producer, is just uh, talking to some students about doing interviews. But it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been really crazy. Um, I, I actually, I, I was in a Students for Justice in Palestine in college. And, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to people who are SJP alum, and I think anyone who was involved in the movement, like, before, not just before October 7th, but even, you know, before 2020, before 2021, I mean, the way young people especially understand the issue of Palestine is so different, and to see something like this happen, like, you know, it feels like my experience five years ago was just so was another world um and it just goes to show how quickly things can change um and you know I th okay so this i don't know if you can see that that blinking red and green light but that is an nypd drone um they they deploy these uh to do sort of aerial reconnaissance at demonstrations and yeah, the NYPD has deployed multiple drones over Columbia University, and they're just watching. You know, they're just watching uh, these students, who are, you know, they're just, they're they're here peacefully. I mean, I see someone right now. I see someone who's, you know, working in an Excel spreadsheet. Like I think people are studying. I think it's final season. It, it's final season. Okay, I, 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 this student just just confirmed it is final season. People are just here studying. They're having a good time. They're they're eating food. They're just hanging out. They're rallying. What's that? <laughs> you know, but uh, the NYPD is out here uh, with uh, reconnaissance drones, with SRGs, uh, and zip ties. These students are, are, are not doing anything besides protesting a genocide, and, and apparently that is, uh, that is enough to warrant arresting them, um, according to Columbia University. So, uh, just, you know, we're going to keep going through this encampment, but... And if you missed any of the... Uh, if you missed anything from the first encampment, uh, it's all on the Breakthrough News Twitter page. There's some stuff on Instagram as well, but Twitter is where we posted all the video. And you can see, you'll see the moment, you'll see our coverage of, of the encampment. And, you know, uh, we talked to people inside the camp. Oh, I think we have an interview here. I'm going to pass it off to Emily. Hi. <laughs> so can you tell me um, how long have you been out here tonight and what brought you out? I was here earlier because today was like a really important day for students to show up to have um, show solidarity for the other Columbia students and prevent more arrests from happening. I came back um, recently because I had to leave earlier in the day, but now I'm here back to help support all the students like I can't offer much other than just being here right now but that's like still important 
Yeah, and can you talk to me about um, this moment of what it means to be not only, I mean, uh, to be a student within um, this current moment, whether it be, uh, I mean, we see a lot of repression facing not only students across the country as, um, as students are leading the pro-Palestine movement, but as well as um, professors and academics who are facing uh, a new level of increased repression for standing in solidarity with Palestine. So could you talk to me about um, what it's like to be a student right now? Yeah, it's a really disappointing time to be witnessing all of this right now because we, I feel like I come from this generation of scholars that is looking for new ways of teaching when we become professors and we're trying to talk about things that we've been trying to talk about for so long and seeing our professors not being allowed to actually amplify the desires and the needs of the students is so disappointing because like they're not just coming after the professors they're coming after the students as well like we actually uh, have certain demands and needs pedagogically speaking that are not being met because people will always choose like financial interests over actually meeting the needs of the students and it's just really disappointing right now yeah so can you talk to me about the feeling though that you're kind of you're faced with this repression of your teachers and of your classmates, but then also um, having everybody come out tonight despite that repression, what does that feel like? I feel like it's actually been like a really beautiful environment to see how people are showing up for each other. Like I know a lot of the people who have been a part of the encampment like are kind of new to the student organizing and the way that people have been coming together to just stick it out and just trust in each other has actually been really uplifting despite all of the repression that people have been getting. Like I've seen like some of the, my friends who have been actively organizing on campus for a while now to say like, you know what? I think like I'm actually getting some, some newfound hope just seeing people come together and show up for us. And even though people are getting arrested and going to jail and getting build out or you know they, they're back like they literally are not going until um the university divests like we're determined we're not going anywhere thank you so much thank you okay yeah 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 we're gonna try to get the girl working on her finals i want to know what she's studying oh sorry Um, so we're just going to keep going here, but, uh, I am, I am curious, you know, I wonder if people are going to go to their finals or go to the encampment. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we don't know. We don't know. You know, this might drag into graduation. So, <laughs> um, if only, if, if only, if, if only. only that, and that was actually, that was actually one of the stated reasons the administration wanted to clear the encampment was graduation um you can't really see it i can try to let me let me zoom in for you all if you see that uh that is that is uh the graduation setup allegedly and columbia university said sorry i'm just fixing my hood they said oh you know we have to clear the camp because uh we need to set up these bleachers. But according to the protesters in the encampment, they actually started bringing in the trucks after the encampment started. So we don't know if they just called in a truck and you know maybe wanted to get their graduation set up started early or something. But uh, you know, that's I guess what Columbia University is really. That's their priority right now is setting up for. For uh, graduation, they're, I guess, unconcerned with the genocide in Palestine. I think we have another interview here. So we're going to turn to this interview. Hello. So can you first uh, tell me how long you've been out here? Um, well, we've been here, like, all throughout the day, and then I left for a few hours to, like, retrieve my laptop. I've been in class since, like, from 8 to 4, and then I came right after from, like, 4 to, like, 7 p.m., Went, left for an hour and then came back and then I've just been working on this. This is a super long like project for my research and design class. It's part of my final 
and I think it's especially being hard like being a student right now when like my classes require attendance but I want to be out here like supporting um, everybody and being being in solidarity like she's been here since you've been here since like eight in the morning right yeah and then she was also here last night when like we actually had all of the tents and everything before like police arrested everybody like this afternoon um, yeah I think it's especially difficult since um, we are like public health students and we know how difficult it is to um, come from a perspective where you know we try to protect people try to like um, try to protect like health and we really like want to influence um, like a generation for change and it's it's hard seeing how the university is not seeing a, like our perspective and they refuse to divest and um, defund everything that's going on like with Palestine um, with Israel and not supporting like Palestine's um, stance on this I think it's, it's just so hard yeah yeah so you're out here working on your finals um, can you talk to me a little bit more about what it's like as a student here to to receive an email from your president who also is is of course testifying yesterday um, and having cops sent in to arrest your fellow classmates have them suspended can you talk about what that feeling is like to be a student here right now honestly it feels horrible because she was talking about like the protest in like 1968 and how she was proud of that history here at Columbia and then when we re replicate this in 2024 um, she immediately sends co cops after us and actually the some of the like student um, affairs committee like they sent out a later email and they said that they were disappointed in the president um, Shafiq's af actions today in sending cops after our students even though this was a completely peaceful protest um, she even influenced the school of public health to not renew one of her professor's um, contracts and he's a human rights and advocacy professor and so they silenced him and like um, didn't renew his contract and terminated him so that's been super difficult and frustrating as a student yeah so what is it like though to you know face that repression both um, the student level as well as your professors academics are facing this repression as well for standing in solidarity with Palestine um, can you speak to the feeling of what it's like to have to be around your your classmates like this who are facing this repression but are still coming out and uh, standing strong for Palestine yeah, I'm super proud of everybody that's here. I know everybody also has finals as well. I've seen other people working on their finals. Um, I mean, the repression and oppression that we feel right now is nothing compared to what people are actually feeling uh, in Palestine. So we're hoping to um, kind of shed light on what is going on by like showing solidarity and then showing support. We're just hoping that as like a new generation, we can influence some change. And if you could give a message to uh, the, the Columbia administration, uh, what would you say? I would just beg them to take our side and to join us and to, for all the professors and all the faculty to not be afraid of like losing their jobs or for like speaking out um, about about um, this issue. Like, don't worry about it. Just like come and join us. Like we'll take care of each other. Like don't worry about it. Well, good luck on your finals. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, it's for research design and data collection, so this is kind of like implementation science in a way. Um, so the crazy thing is that only 14% of like research gets actually practiced, and it takes roughly 17 years for a research project to start, finish, and then be implemented into practice. But only then, 14% of it only uh, is actually implemented. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Heard it here first. That's that's pretty impressive. She's uh, she's studying for her final out here. So, you know, again, I mean, th if that doesn't speak to the dedication of uh, people here, they they'd rather they'd rather uh, study out in the, the cold on the, the front lawn of their campus uh, than miss this historic moment. Um, all right. Looks like they're making an announcement.
is this referendum? this referendum is for that they're talking about? They're CUNY, yeah. I'm not, I, oh, they're yeah. CUNY students. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 CUNY students. Oh, you're, oh, shit, sorry. What, what is this referendum about? Oh, from from Israel. Tomorrow? It's it closes it's tomorrow at ten. Wow. Okay. It's been in effect for a bit. Okay. So uh, I was just told that there's a referendum that I guess close the voting closes tomorrow uh, to divest from Israel. So it's highly relevant to this, of course. Um, and they just they just called on everyone to vote yes on the referendum. Um, now, I think a big question will be, how will the university respond? Because uh, if, I was a, if I was a betting man, I would say that all of the tension right now around the issue of Palestine, I, I think a lot, of, I think the voter turnout will be high. And I think uh, given what's happening right now and the genocide, um, I imagine the referendum will pass. So uh, we'll, we'll let you know what the result of the referendum is, but this could also add a tremendous amount of pressure on Manoush Shafiq, the Columbia University president. But anyway, we're going to continue going through uh, the Columbia University encampment number two. Uh, if you've been following this story, students at Columbia University, as well as Barnard, ha have been occupying the campus lawn, and uh, they were arrested today for uh, allegedly trespassing under, they were charged with trespassing on their own campus, where they paid tuition. So, uh, you know, that is... That is Columbia University under Manu Shafiq. Uh, she violated a 50-year precedent of the NYPD not being allowed on campus to arrest people who are protesting a genocide. And uh, of course, she's been, you know, being grilled in Congress for uh, allegedly fostering uh, an anti-Semitic environment at Columbia University, which uh, really just means anti-Zionist. Uh, she allows, she was allowing, you know, anti-Zionist activities to happen, which is not even really true because she was repressing it, but this encampment formed in solidarity with uh, the first encampment, which was shut down. Uh, so we're just going to keep going through the crowd here. I think the rally, the rally portion has ended, and um, the students are pledging to... Um, So, uh, yeah, the rally has ended, um, but apparently, you know, they're, they're, they're here to stay. Again, uh, as you can see, they have 
sleeping bags, uh, they have water, they have all kinds of snacks. You know, they don't, they're, they're not going to leave. Um, they're apparently having a movie screening. I don't know what movie they're screening, but they're here for the long run. And uh, there's, the NYPD is apparently, they, they pulled up with some large arrest buses on the outside, but they haven't entered the campus since uh, 3 p.m. today when they arrested the, the students initially. So um, we'll see what happens with this encampment. They haven't set up tents, and I, I, I've heard that... Sorry, I'm switching hands here. I've heard that uh, the school is, like, not wanting to, I think, arrest 200 people right now, 200 students. So they've said, as long as you don't set up tents, we'll sort of allow it. But again, you know, with finals coming up, or not finals, with graduation coming up, It'll be a big question whether or not they let, um, whether they let this encampment continue. It'll be a big question. It'll be a big question whether or not they let this uh, encampment continue. But obviously, things could not be more tense on campus right now. Uh, we just heard an announcement that there's going to be a referendum uh, for uh, divestment from Israeli apartheid and Israeli genocide. Uh, one big update, <coughs> one big update is that the students actually won a huge victory, which is that apparently the university has agreed to disclose what's in its endowment. and. The Columbia University Endowment, as you can imagine, it being, you know, the Ivy League, being the Ivy League school that it is, is, I think it's $14 billion. Like, it's huge. It's one of the biggest endowments in, of all universities. And uh, obviously, you know, they're probably a few billion dollars invested in, in Israel, so, uh, you know, universities tend to be incredibly cagey around that information. So uh, I've actually, you know, and again, um, like I was saying earlier, I don't think there's ever been a university that has disclosed its investment portfolio like this. So if it's true, and, you know, I'm, I haven't, like, confirmed it or anything, but <laughs> if what the students are telling us is true... Yeah that they're releasing their investment portfolio, that would be a sort of uh, unprecedented thing that's happening. And there have been many precedents set in Palestine student organizing recently. Uh, if you, you know, if you're a Breakthrough News watcher, you saw that uh, Pitzer College, Pitzer College in California recently ended their study abroad in Tel Aviv. They had a, a study of abroad program in Israel and they ended it after a years long campaign uh, from the Students for Justice in Palestine there. So, um, you know, there seems to be a lot happening on the front of student organizing for Palestine. We're getting some waves here, kisses for the live stream. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we continue on. Um, and we have some banners here from the Teachers College. So, you know, everyone's, everyone's out here. Everyone's out here. I'll read some of these banners to you. Uh, this is Columbia out of uh, Harlem. Um, we're in Harlem right now. Columbia's in Harlem. And... Columbia is one of the biggest uh, landholders in New York City, and in the first speech, there was uh, there was a resident who's lived in in Harlem for for decades, and he was talking about how you know his neighbors, many of his neighbors, have been uh, pushed out by Columbia because obviously you know when a big fancy university comes in, they bring you know students with money and. They spend that money, and, and uh, the vendors in the area 
raise their prices and there becomes a you know a disparity of income and that uh, forces the people who used to live in in that that area to, to have to leave uh, you know and this is what we call gentrification and Colombia has been a huge sort of uh, you know source of that gentrification uh, and you know it's it swallows up land it's it buys a ton of land in Harlem and that causes real estate prices to rise as well so you know uh, that's another thing that students here have been fighting is the way Colombia contributes to gentrification in Harlem but I think we have another interview here yeah, um, can you tell me uh, what brought you out here tonight? Yeah, so um, I'm out here tonight in solidarity with the Gaza Solidarity Encampment. Um, this morning, the NYPD arrested over 100 organizers, not knowing that over a 1,000 more students, um, activists, organizers would come to take their place because we all recognize that this is a historic moment. We're building off of the legacy of 1968, where students here at Columbia came out um, to protest this fascist institution and its ties with corporations displacing people from Harlem and also Colombia's relationship to um, you know, the, the war in Vietnam. And so we're building off of this legacy of um, anti-war activism, of student activism. We know that it's always been the students who have actually made real change. Um, I'm actually also an alum of Columbia, of CASA 2020, and a former member of uh, Students for Justice in Palestine. When I was here, we um, actually passed the BDS referendum a couple times, but the university shot it down every time that we passed it. And um, it's really amazing to see, you know, this moment, especially because of the genocide in Gaza, because of the mass movement that we've seen across the United States, across Canada, across the world, um, for Palestine, that this moment has really, you know, ignited a flame in everyone's um, hearts and in their spirits to really stand our ground and say that we will not stop until we get our demands met. The students are demanding that Colombia divests entirely from all the corporations that um, they're invested in um, in the Zionist apartheid state. And um, on top of that, they're building off of the demands of the movement, the movement for Palestine, which is calling for an immediate ceasefire, lifting of the siege on Gaza, the release of all Palestinian political prisoners, an end to the occupation from the river to the sea, and an end to all U.S. aid to Israel. So um, it really is, I can't overstate how much of a historic moment it is. Um, we're, we're out here, we've been out here for over a day now, this is the second day, and you know, hopefully we'll stay out here for as long as we can until our demands are all met. Yeah, can you talk about that feeling of what it's been like to see so many people come through even after the repression that we saw um, this morning where over 100 students were arrested after the president of the university had cops come into uh, the university the first time since 1968, as you mentioned before. So what has that been like to see so many people come out after um, so many arrests this morning? Yeah, I think, you know, the students and all of us were really disgusted by, you know, Manouf Shafiq, the president of this university, how um, shameful her congressional speech was, how she completely malignized the students and, um, you know, characterized them as, uh, you know, uh, terrorists or standing on the side of injustice or anti-Semitic, um, which is, you know, exactly the opposite of what the students are out here for. So I think, you know, students were outraged by that. And on top of that, you know, students ha saw this moment as really one where we can advance our goals that we've been pushing for for, you know, many years. The Columbia University Apartheid Divest was founded in 2016. Um, it was, you know, re-established again this year following the uh, beginning of the, of the phase of genocide on Gaza right now. And, um, you know, I think that when the students saw how disgustingly, um, you know, they are repressed by the NYPD as well as how shameful um, students have been repressed here since October, um, you know, with doxing campaigns, with suspensions, with um, you know, students being attacked by chemical weapons, with silence from the administration, it's just been building off of all of that, um, all of that resentment towards the administration and and around how they really do not care about their students. They do not care about the majority of their students because it's clear that 
the majority of the students stand with this movement. Um, there's over 90 groups that are part of COAD. There's been thousands of students who've been coming out to protest since October 7 and even before. Um, and I think that this is just like a really clear manifestation of the democratic will of the students. And I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but earlier we heard mention of a referendum. Do you know anything about that? Uh, referendum for like right now mentioned? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think maybe you're talking about the referendum against suspension? Is that the one you're talking I about? I think so, I yeah. think so. Yeah, so um, um, I don't know the exact number, but a bunch of the students who were arrested this morning were suspended. They found out they were suspended as soon as they got out of jail. Some of them found out they were suspended right before they were arrested via email. Mm -hmm. And um, also um, potentially being evicted. We know that there, um, just last week there were six students, um, Palestinian, Arab, and Jewish students, who were arbitrarily suspended, evicted, um, banned from campus. You know, that means that they don't have access to their housing, they don't have access to their meal plans, their livelihood, and they're banned from their education. And um, we, the referendum calls on, on everyone to say that we will not accept for this to happen to the many other students who were arrested again, and we demand that the students who were arrested, who were suspended, sorry, um, earlier this week also um, have their suspension revoked um, because it's completely unacceptable, undemocratic, and disgusting. Yeah, yeah, and um, can you speak to a little bit more about what the environment is like tonight, what it means to be out here, and what your interactions with your classmates or previous classmates have been, and what, especially as an alum too, I think, and seeing the response from the university, from the president, um, students received an email today, uh, and of course her calling the cops on these students. So could you talk a little bit more about what it means to be an alum here, and especially someone who was a part of the SJP uh, as well um, previously? Yeah, definitely. So I think like the overwhelming feeling that everyone has right now is really of like, it's really beautiful um, seeing so many people out here, so many people that we know, so many people we, we don't know, so many people who've just gotten like into the movement for Palestine, who've been seeing, you know, the injustice of this university, but also obviously more broadly, you know, what's happening to our people in Palestine and Gaza. Um, as an alum, it's an incredible um, feeling for me. Like when I first started school here in 2016, there was an SJP. Um, we've had protests, but you know, I can't say it was huge. Um, and the fact that I'm standing here with thousands of students who are not only, you know, out protesting, but out here, you know, willing to stay in the cold, willing to stay overnight, bringing food and blankets and supplies and like all kinds of support for people they don't know. Um, it's really amazing because, it, you know, it's clear that we're reunited by a cause that is much greater than us, which is, you know, freedom for Palestine, for all the demands that we had. And um, yeah, I think, you know, I, as an alum, I'm definitely not proud to be an alum of this institution that is steeped in blood and, and steeped in Zionism and fascism, but I am proud to be a student amongst the students here who are standing on the right side of history. Um, we're just going to keep going on here. I'm eating a kind bar. So, excuse me for that. But, uh, that is one aspect that I think I neglected to mention. All of the students who were participating in the, uh, in the first encampment have been suspended. They've, they've been suspended and you know, I was told by them earlier this morning that the penalty for the charge they incurred, uh, which was, I think, like disorderly conduct or, or something, it was something. The, the penalty is essentially like a verbal reprimand. Like, it's a slap on the wrist. And they were hit with suspensions. So, you know, Columbia is just bending the rules again. And if you've been following what's been happening on this campus... And we've been covering some of it at Break the News. If you've been following what's been happening, Columbia has repeatedly broken the rule, broken its own rules to uh, ban JVP and SJP, to, you know, attack the students repeatedly, to protect Zionists on this campus uh, who have actually physically assaulted and, and launched chemical weapons attacks at uh, students. 
So they just keep changing their own rules, and it's clear how afraid they are of of the students here. And you know that's what makes this so amazing. Is I mean, I don't think uh, you know a student body could face anything more repressive than the threat of uh, suspension. Um, yet you know that is really what all of these students are up against, and they they don't care. They're they're completely unafraid. So um, I think that's why the world is sort of watching, is fixated on what's happening at Columbia. And um, you can tell us in the comments section if this is true, but, you know, I think uh, people have been doing this at other universities. I, I think I saw a video from Yale, from Yale University, that uh, this is happening there too. And um, they're occupying their campus too. And, you know, it's hugely significant that it's happening at these Ivy League schools, at these, at, at these huge institutions. Not because, you know, they're Ivy Leagues or they're special or anything like that, but because these schools, uh, you know, they really represent, um, well, first of all, they have huge endowments. And if you're talking about divestment as a tactic, divestment from Israel and divestment from, um, you know, apartheid, the huge endowments are obviously, you know, have a disproportionate weight and importance in this. But also, you know, the cultural significance of Columbia, Yale, Harvard, these these uh, Ivy League institutions is, of course, you know, they're synonymous with uh, academic excellence in this country. Uh, you know, they're allegedly the best schools in this country. And, you know, this is allegedly where the best minds you know, go to uh, sort of commingle, but clearly, you know, um, what what that really means in practice is that these institutions, they are sort of, uh, you know, they're they're the nerve centers. They are the brain trusts of the imperialist class, and uh, you know, they they encourage uh, debate and, and academic study and you know, speech until they, you say something that goes against the empire. And I think the students here have figured out what that limit to free speech on the Columbia campus is. Uh, apparently, it is condemning genocide. Um, so, you know, that is, uh, that, is, that is why people, I think, are so outraged. Um, So, okay, cool. Um, so I think we're gonna wrap our stream soon. We're gonna stay with the, we're gonna stay with the Columbia encampment. Um, we're gonna keep co uh, covering the Columbia encampment, but uh, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna wrap for tonight. Uh, just. Uh, for, for stamina reasons and, you know, we got to charge our batteries and stuff. But uh, thank you so much for everyone who's been watching tonight. And, you know, I'll just make another pitch. Uh, if, you, if you support, you know, what we do, if you like what we do at Break the News, um, please consider signing up for our Patreon, which I think is just patreon.org slash break the news. But, um, you know, obviously it takes, uh, takes a lot of, uh, you know, people power. It takes a lot of resources to run a media operation, but, you know, that shouldn't deter us. Uh, we, we need independent media. We need uh, media that, that actually tells the truth and, you know, is not bought and paid for by, by um, you know, these, these corporations, by the, you know, Coca-Cola and, uh, you know, Viacom and what have you. So, you know, if you, if you like what we do, Please consider just throwing us a few bucks a month even. You know, I think the lowest tier is $5 a month. So, um, you know, if you're willing to just forego that cup of coffee, maybe, you know, one cup of coffee a month, it would really, it would really go a long way for us. So, again, we really appreciate everyone who's tuned in. We're going to keep covering the Columbia University uh, encampment for Gaza, for Palestine. But with that... I'm going to sign up. Uh, oh, the, okay, so we're, we're signing off here. But thank you, everyone, so much for, for watching.
we still going? Okay. All right. I think we're trying to end the stream right now, but uh, look, we're never we're never going to stop covering this. this we're gonna we 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 may graduate with we may graduate with the Columbia University encampment. So just stay tuned. <laughs> um, you know, graduations in two weeks, guys. Uh, so you know, this this might this might really become disruptive. Uh, getting some waves here. The, there's some folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 live right now. I don't know if this. Um, are you all your students here? Um, how do you feel about how do you feel about uh, your president arresting your your classmates? Oh. So I can oh. tell you how I felt about being arrested. Um, obviously, like we knew, we knew from the get-go. I knew from the get-go. My comrades and colleagues and friends, we all knew from the get-go that this campus and this administration and this president does not represent us, nor do they protect us, nor do they have our best interests in mind. And we know that this president and this administration has invited NYPD inside our campus after 50 years of not having NYPD in our campus and to have students who are here to, well, why were we here in the first place? You know, we were steadfast and we were firm standing against genocide. And if Minu Shafiq and her little posse doesn't have the audacity and the nerve or, or the bravery or the courage to uh, call for divestment and call for an end for a genocide and stand on the right side of history and stand on the right side of justice, they need to get out of the way because the students are not moving. Um, and if you look around, that did, the NYPD did not stop us. This administration did not stop us. Manu Shafiq did not stop us. Um, so she can go in front of her little congr congressional hearing and bend down and, you know, bootleg whoever the hell she needs to bootleg. But we're here, we're steadfast, and we are not giving up. Um, and what I remind myself is that we're here because we stand for the liberation of Palestine and we stand for the 33,000 plus Palestinians that have been murdered slaughtered in Gaza, including over 13,000 children. And I remind myself that every day. And it was really scary to be there with all those cops coming into our campus. Like it happened, we knew that they were surrounding the campus from the night before, but like it happened suddenly and it was really frightening and it was very anxiety inducing. Um, and it was really scary. Like there were people like crying in the circle. Like we were holding each other tight because we knew that at the end of the day, we knew what, what was going to happen. We knew we were going to get arrested. At that point, we knew there was no turning away from that um, and you know the only the only way to avoid being arrested would be if we abandoned our friends and comrades and that's not what we're what we are about um, we don't we don't abandon each other we protect each other um, because again this administration this 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 college this president does not protect us um, but yeah that w it was really it was very frightening and it was a very traumatizing experience to be zip tied to have your wrist hurt um, for hours to have to wait in a cell for hours um, and, you know, thank God we got, you know, we were released.